I'm gonna teach you how to cook these at home like a professional chef. Oh, it touched my stomach, no. There's one thing, no matter how many times you search how to cook the perfect steak, that never comes up. And I don't know if it's a restaurant secret, something not talked about, and that one thing is the heat differential. The temperature difference between the steak and its environment and why you need that and to understand it to cook a better steak. Behind me, we have two woodwinds, two 24 inch woodwinds, exactly the same, rocking out at the same temperature. This one has the sidekick on it because we're gonna use the sidekick to sear. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna season both steaks the same. They're both within an ounce of each other and we're gonna sear one and throw it in and we're gonna put another one in to roast and then reverse sear it. So I can show you that it doesn't matter whether you sear before or after. What matters is the heat differential and I'll tell you what that means and why. Starting out with these two completely gorgeous tomahawk steaks, we're gonna season the absolute hell out of them. Left, right, top, bottom, all the way around. You wanna make sure they're coated perfectly. And before we put them on the grill, we might even season them again. Because the second that you move them and set them down, they're gonna start losing that seasoning. So I have both smokers behind me rolling at 165 degrees. That's the key. We're not cooking them at 165 degrees, but we're starting to cook at 165 degrees, and I'll tell you why. But first, we're gonna throw our one that we're gonna reverse sear on our grill. So on our first steak, we've let it rest a little bit, which isn't that important. People always say bring the steak out of the fridge, let it rest, come to room temperature, etc. Not that important. What is important is the difference between the grill temperature and this steak temperature. That steak is 50 degrees. The grill temperature is 152. You have a heat differential of only 100 degrees. That's the key. Now we're gonna turn up our smoker to 275 and then gradually turn it up to 325, which is gonna be our cook temperature, keeping the differential, the space, that temperature change between the steak and the grill as close together as possible. So as our first steak is on, heat differential is set, starting to smoke it up. We're gonna reverse sear it later. We're gonna sear our other steak right now. We're gonna grab a little bit of avocado oil, put it on our ripping hot smoking cast iron, then once we sear it, we're gonna throw it inside. So what you're looking for is the most perfect French toast style crust. We're also gonna turn and sear this fat cap. And just so you guys know, when I say French toast crust, I mean this end to end, like French toast in a pan when the egg starts cooking with the cream. That crust, that's what I want you to relate the steak to. Look at how much fat is rendering down as tallow, just dripping. French toast crust. Throw it in, throw our probe in. The other one was 50 degrees when it went in. And this one, let's throw that in and shut it. After searing the steak and throwing it in, putting the temp probe in it, 48 degrees. After searing, that one without searing, 50 degrees. Two degrees difference. Let's adjust this and set the temperature up to 275 so it matches the other grill. What's gonna happen is as the grill increases temperature, the steak is increasing temperature with it, and that differential between them is very small. That is what gets you the end-to-end -end perfection on your steak. What I wanna show you is whether you sear it and throw it in, like Gordon Ramsay or another professional chef, or whether you're in your backyard reverse searing it because you're smoking it, that doesn't matter. It's all about the heat differential. Let's let these steaks cook a little bit and come back in a second. Burn the chair to purge the purge the chair to burn her. Burn the chair to fur the flute in there. Burn the boom. Burn the chair to blur. Blur blur. So we've had our steaks going for about 20 minutes now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back now that the steaks are at a higher temperature and I'm going to raise the temperature of the grill to that finishing temperature, which is going to be 325. So the idea of the heat differential is 
the stake and the environment that it's in and the difference in temperature between that. Let's say we take a steak and we sear it, and we go to put it in the oven to roast it because maybe it's a thicker ribeye like these, they're two and a half inches thick. When you take the steak and you sear it and you put it in the oven, let's say the oven's at 325, there's a large heat differential. Maybe the steak's at 50 degrees when it's done searing, like these were, and then you put it in that oven. That's, that's a 270, is it 270? What is it? I wasn't listening to the numbers. What did I say? 325? 50? 225? That's hard. 275 degree heat differential between it. And what that's going to do is it's going to start kind of searing and cooking the outside before the inside starts cooking all the way. And that's where you start getting that brown all the way around the edge instead of it being a more edge to edge pink. Now, some people think this is because you're not smoking it and then searing it or you're not searing it and then smoking it. It has nothing to do with that. I'm hoping that they show exactly what I think they're going to show is that the heat differential is what changes that, not how you cook the steak. So our first one is done. 120. We're going to pull it out and immediately reverse sear it. A little bit of oil. Throw it right down. Now we're not raising the temperature with this. We're just searing the outside. It has to be fast. Make sure you get the fat cap. So we're immediately going to set this down on clear wrap and clear wrap it. I'm going to set it over here. So we're going to take this open her up, same thing, straight down, and immediately clear wrap it. The reason why we're clear wrapping them is so as the temperature comes down and they start releasing liquids, they're gonna be bathing in that liquid and reabsorbing it. This clear wraps restaurant grade, and if Marco Pierre White, the guy that has three Michelin stars, and trained Gordon Ramsay did this, we can do it too. Both steaks have rested for about 20 minutes now. We're gonna unwrap them, and the first thing we're gonna do Check out this liquid that we've saved inside of this wrap instead of it dripping out. And the steaks are still really hot. Kind of reluctant to unwrap them. We have to finish up the video. You could let these rest like 40 minutes or longer, but we're just gonna give it a go now. So this is the sear first, and here we have the reverse sear. You can definitely tell that with the reverse sear, there is more smoke on it from the smoker. Keep in mind, if you were cooking in an oven or something different, you're not going to experience that. That smells phenomenal. Which one was that? This is the reverse here. Pinker, not as pink. Definitely keep that in mind. Smoker. So let's take the bone out. So I'm not going to trim the spinel, so I'm, not gonna, I'm just going to slice the steak right on the end. See what happens. You see that? Yep. Notice how there is no browning, like deep browning all along the edge. No dark brown. That little bit is brown, but see how there's also pink like right there already? You get further in. Look. See this just edge right here? This tiny little bit. And then you can see a bit of a smoke ring, even though this was seared first. And then I guess the end over here, it's a little bit thinner, so it's going to cook differently. This end to end, coast to coast, pink. Look at this. Can you see that? I'm just barely touching my knife to it. That looks really good. Look at that juice. Barely, just barely adding pressure with my knife. This was sear, and then we cooked it. And we're going to taste it. So we'll have like a little bit right here of the edge. Mm. Throw me one of those. Oh, 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 oh. oh yeah, that's that's really good. Is it juicy? That's and remember, when you guys uh cut your steak like this, always come back and finish with a little salt if you cut it like this. Reverse sear, right there. Look at that. Can you see? Yep. So this one seems like it's actually a little bit less juicy. Let's give it another cut. 
That's actually surprising for me because I anticipated them being very much so the same, but you can tell this one has a little bit darker edge on it from the sear, even though we barely seared it that long. And then the cook edge and the pink, but it's still very, look. Has a good ring on it. That's though. brown right there. And that's what you would expect all the way to the other end. This is pink brown right there. So just a little bit. And then we have a little bit more here, like that. Yep. It's still very much so end to end. End bit. Oh, yeah. Which one's better? They're both equally juicy, even though this one doesn't, does it? It's still juicy, you can see that. It just seems like it's not, well, maybe it is. They're both incredibly similar. This one has a deeper, richer taste from the smoke, but that's to be expected because we, well, smoked it first and then seared it. Whereas this one, when you sear it first and then put it on a smoker, you're developing a crust so the smoke isn't penetrating as much. If you were to do this at home, I would definitely say they're almost completely even. And that's because of the heat differential, not because of the style on how you cook it. It's about slowly raising the temperature of the beef in its environment instead of putting cooler beef in a hotter environment and getting more of a sear on the outside before the inside has a chance to cook. Like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next. Cook like Macho Man Randy Savage, because we're about to get it, brother!